Welcome to Grazing Hell, the one and only podcast made by a cow. And today I've got a wonderful guest with wonderful hair. If you're listening, <laughs> you're missing out on how amazing she looks right now. Um, Shania. Hi. Shanspear. Yes. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining the Thank cow Thank you and for I. having me. Can I meet the oh. cow today or? Uh, she, she's here she's just doing some gardening oh, um how yeah. does she do it with the the hooves, hooves. Or, yeah oh she's pretty handy i mean how does she do the editing with the hooves you know like wow she's just she's she's good like, she's crafty like that she's better so. than me in every like feasible way <laughs> <laughs> and same here same here <laughs> but um yeah thank you so much for coming mm -hmm. for anyone in case they're not familiar with your work do you want to just tell us a little bit about what you do yes i am the self-proclaimed pop cult princess of youtube i talk a lot Love about uh, pop culture things, whether that be social media trends or cultural phenomenons. And I have a very big habit of cringing my audience out <laughs> in the process. <laughs> it, have you got an example of that that comes to mind? Oh, God. I... <laughs> I have admitted to reading Voldemort fan fiction in my youth. That has followed me for... At least you admit it, though, because we yeah. all did stuff like that, but we just don't admit it. I admit it, and I think I regret it at the same time. <laughs> I also admit it to listening to Obsessed by Addison Rae. That didn't go over well at all. You know what? I saw your story, mm -hmm. and it's not a bad song. It's catchy. And she's it, got a nice enough voice, you know? It didn't like, go well at all. People, like, bullied me for, like, 13 hours straight. <laughs> and then I got, like, followed, too. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Really? I mean, people really hate the TikTokers, don't yeah. they? I mean, it, it seems as if they just get a lot of wrath. Which, mm -hmm. I mean, some of it, don't get me wrong. Yeah, is, um, some of it is that, very uh, warranted. Mm. for what they have done but um at the same time i just like the song i just think the song yeah is exactly like super like catchy it's if something is catchy it's catchy it doesn't matter who made it it's so fun and yeah i'm gonna keep listening to it <laughs> yeah yeah and i like that bit where it's like i, I can't remember that the lyrics but it's like that little riff where it's like, nah, 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 do. it's like, yeah, it is. It's you know what? So fun. We, I just... This is our statement. <laughs> we are saying it on the record. Obsessed by Addison Ray is good. Yeah, we're canceled. There it goes. Oh my god, we're so canceled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the but, end um, of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny because people. I watched the video of her on was it Jimmy Fallon um, doing the live performance, and I don't think it was live i think it was lip synced because just it didn't sound live yeah. but people were talking about how bad it was but the dancing was good it's just that she wasn't singing live see which is a shame because it's like why not the but, thing yeah. is i feel like i can never like um sort of ridicule or degrade people for their singing capabilities or dancing capabilities <laughs> i can't do either i right. am a talker First and foremost, yes. I cannot sing. If you ever hear me sing, it's going to be the whole world. <laughs> so, for all I know, she's like the best singer alive. How am I supposed to know? You know, I don't really. Yeah, talk. I mean, exactly. Um, it's funny because Madison and I were talking about this last week or the week before um, when I had her on, and she's a singer, mm -hmm. Madison Brown, and she was talking about I how she, yeah, yeah, and she was talking about how she doesn't think charlie or dixie dixie she she does she's not a fan of her voice mm -hmm. and i was saying and she was talking about another creator who said this i was saying like to me if someone's in tune that's a good singer to me because i don't sing oh, if you're yeah. in tune that's good enough to me whereas like she obviously is very technically knowledgeable mm -hmm. so yeah yeah it was just quite funny comparing like i think if you have an ear for that thing but mm -hmm. yeah so okay so you sometimes cringe your audience out and that's that's healthy you know i think parasocial relationships can get quite unhealthy where people just think you're perfect so if yeah. you're a bit cringy sometimes all the you time. know it kind of keeps you grounded mm -hmm. all the time <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but today's episode is very specific. Um, might be, apart from the episode I did on political lesbianism, might be <laughs> the most specific episode because today we are talking about an iconic TV show that has affected both of our lives immensely. Yes, yes. And the music is great. You know, the dun, dun, dun. Oh, yeah. It's Pretty Little Liars. Pretty Little Liars. Pretty Little Liars. It is, quite frankly, the Riverdale before Riverdale. It is a cultural phenomenon. <laughs> you know, Pretty Little Liars trotted so Riverdale could gallop. You <laughs> Awkwardly know? run, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and honestly, I mean, I do think... Even when Pretty Little Liars gets bad towards the end, I feel like its badness is still way better than how Riverdale has progressed or aged. See, the thing is, I feel like Pretty Little Liars can be separated into like very distinct um, categories of badness. I feel like the first two or three seasons are possibly the best seasons of the show. Oh, yeah. Then you get to like season four. And then you get to season five, and you're like, oh, wow, it's yeah. getting worse. It's, a chore. it's like... How many? Are there five or six? There's, there's seven seasons. Wait, there's seven? How did I forget? Oh, yeah, no, I remember season seven. Actually, you... that's, this is a good moment to say that if you haven't watched the show and you are planning to and you don't want spoilers, just don't listen to this episode because I want us to be free to talk about mm -hmm. the dirty details. Yeah. I want us to speculate. I want us to share our theories. And... We can't do that without spoiling it. So, Obviously. Yeah. This is your warning. I have a lot of spoilers coming up. Oh, Very gosh. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my God. Speaking of, um, Shania did some homework <laughs> that I didn't even assign her. She's You're like the person who does extra credit when the yeah. teacher didn't ask you to. Everyone in the class. Do you want to tell us what you brought? <laughs> I brought with me, quite frankly... <laughs> The, the pinnacle of trying too hard. I brought, <laughs> I brought a PowerPoint presentation of who oh should have been A, the theories of why I think they are A, and just a good old fun little chat about um, the confirmed <laughs> A's and what I think uh, should have happened with the show. Exactly. I mean, should we just get cracking? Do you want Honestly, to just get it out? Yes, let's just get to let's it. Let's just do it. I'm yeah. very excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> I don't know how um, how happy you guys are going to be with this, actually. Oh, with your theory? Is it an yeah. unpopular theory? It's a, Ooh. It was popular, became super unpopular after. Interesting. Okay. I mean, I don't think anything's going to be as unpopular as the ending. <laughs> The the last A. Oh yeah. The, can be. I think the first A made total sense. Exact okay. Um, we are on the same page. I <laughs> okay, good, good. <laughs> absolutely love Oh my god. This day. is incredible. <laughs> I I feel so I pity anyone who's listening and not watching. Oh, Honestly. Sure. Okay, so I'm gonna try to be as descriptive as possible for the listeners. Yes, Shan yes. has got <laughs> Shan has got up a PowerPoint and it's Shan Spears Guide to Catching A, and A is like the red scribble, like in the show. Mm -hmm. An obnoxious, uh, is that, what's that meant? To, there's like a thing over it. Does that work? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> An obnoxious presentation by yours truly. I, I can I mean, I... tell, like, by this setup alone that I was the most hated English major ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you studied English too. So did I. Oh, that's really cool. I don't really yes. meet much uh, English majors, actually. No. I mean, I think it's uh, more common in the UK. Apparently in the US, it's like more looked down upon. Oh, yeah. Like it's like a useless degree, whereas in the UK, yeah. it's like pretty respected. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. the... You know, it's not being a doctor, but it's like, <laughs> yeah, English is a good degree here. In America, so. it's like, you're never going to get a job. You're going to die alone and poor, <laughs> basically, nice. is what they're saying. I, I remember love that. I told my... Uh, my college advisor that I wanted to actually be an author and they told me that um I need to find something that's more realistic <laughs> oh nice love now, that I love how encouraging they are 
Yeah, now look at me. I'm an influencer. That's so much more realistic than... Well, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, right, shall we get to the first page? Well, this is the first page, but yes. the second uh, slide, rather, We will not proceed. Page. We will proceed. I just, I'm just so excited. I'm like... <laughs> okay. I start off by talking about the three confirmed A's that are in the uh, series. And yes. I titled this the Three Horsemen of the Plot Hole Apocalypse because uh, oh my God. all three of these, all three of these A's have been ridiculed to some extent. I would say Mona is the least ridiculed, but Cece and Alex, oh boy. Everyone CC storyline has aged horribly as well. Yeah. Like that's... even though the show when did the show finish? Was it 2015? 2016? Uh 2017. Yeah. Okay, so in... it's not old. It's not mm -hmm. old, which is why it's an absolute crime that there's already a reboot. Like, yeah. It... What? I'm sorry, what? There's gonna be a reboot. There's gonna be a re reboot. I I know. It's so I think I need guess to who's some doing time. it? Who's doing it? Guess who's doing it? The showrunner of Riverdale. Oh my god, it really is Riverdale before Riverdale. It's the new Riverdale. That it's all amazing. coming full circle. I, I'm actually kind of excited to see what major train wreck they could possibly oh, do. I know. Oh, but anyway, sorry, you were talking about the A's. There's three A's. God, my um, brain is just like shut down uh, you're think, still reboot, processing that reboot reboot okay so <laughs> the first a for season one and two was of course mona vanderwall she mm. is the sassy very uh dressy sort of prima donna of mm. series she was hannah's best friend and i believe her reception was very high in um regards like people loved her reveal Mm. Um, however, people did, <laughs> people did have like a problem with her motivation. So as we, okay. all, as we all know, the A text began way before, um, Mona and Hannah stopped really being close friends. That's why people have yes. a sort of problem with the motivation and the motivation for those who um, may not remember it was that Mona felt left out. She felt like Hannah was being friends with the other girls more than um, her. And I think she just also had a bit of leftover feelings for the whole Ali situation. You know, Mona was bullied. Ali bullied her. Yeah, yeah. She was bullied extensively throughout her mm. uh, high school years. And we can talk about how Ali was ruined as a character because she was <laughs> she began as a sociopath and it was yeah. like, you should have stuck with that. Don't try and redeem her. Yes, exactly. Some people just don't, some characters, I would say, don't need redemptions. No. <sighs> I but, loved um, Mona, yeah. Well, the thing with Mona, you're right, actually. I hadn't thought of that, but that that is true because the whole reason they become friends again is because they get these texts <laughs> yeah, and exactly. they talk about it's like at Ali's funeral the first text mm -hmm. so yeah I you know what now that you said that I'm like oh no maybe Mona as mm. a isn't as great as I thought but, but who else would it have been oh, or are you yes. gonna say we, we will get to that but okay. <laughs> um, I did hear this theory that maybe Mona started up with the a text before they became friends again to try to keep them um separated in a way keep them scared so they don't form as a group again and it kind of backfired in her face that's why a began escalating in a way throughout seasons one and two like it started off as like oh i'm gonna tell this i'm gonna tell that and then it became more like if you don't do this this will happen to you you know okay. and sort of humiliating the girls especially hannah hannah was publicly humiliated countless times via mona who was her best alleged best friend mm -hmm. saying quotes oh my god yeah hannah got it bad very bad like i was i actually just finished season two i'm actually re-watching the series right now because i it is just so good I, uh, I it is i love seasons one and two and i think also three but we'll get into that um, yeah i'm actually re-watching and i can't believe in my like adolescent mind i never put 
Mona, like I never connected the dots between Mona and A. Like a lot of the the occurrences that happened happened while Mona was around. And it's just very fun to go back and sort of see how they constructed that. Because I, for one, was like shocked when Mona was revealed. I don't know if if you were sort of like... Well, here's the thing. What Did you watch it as it came out? Because I didn't. I watched it after, you know what I mean? Like uh-huh. not when it had all come out, but I'd watched it like a year or two after the yes. hype. So I was like... Yeah biggest Pretty Little Liars fan when it came out. It came out in like 2010. So I was like 11. And I probably didn't watch it the exact time it aired. But I did um, fall into tandem with the the airings. And I, it was just so, I literally wrote my first ever sort of book. And I I put book in quotation marks because... (laughs) Boy, <laughs> like 11 or 12 and that's how you know something really like impacted you or resonated you as like especially as a writer that mm. you like base your entire first creation off of it it was horrible but <laughs> you know I love that though it's it's very cute um in retrospect but it, it makes me wonder, should I have been writing, like, about murder and No, but this is the thing. It's, it's, that's what was so great about seasons one and two of Pretty Little Liars and season one of Riverdale is that yes. they have this, like, murder mystery thriller, which mm-hmm. was for teens and, you know, preteens. And it was, like, so, it was, like, really gripping and really good, but, like, really suited that audience. Yeah. And then we'll obviously talk about it more, but like it, 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 they, they seem to just stray away from that. And it's like, no, just like, like, let it be what it is. Don't try and make it something that it's not like, there's nothing wrong with being a teen show. And I think a lot of it stems from, I would say greed. Um, a lot Mm. of showrunners just don't know when to stop. (laughs) No. Oh God, no. Because I feel like Pretty Little Liars, it, it has a very clear ending in a way that, you could just cut it off right after the first A reveal, realistically. You didn't have to keep going back and forth and finding all these different A's. They could have even extended the series in a way um, that they don't reveal Mona so suddenly, I would say. It did feel weirdly sudden, actually. Mm -hmm. Like, it all unravels in that episode. One episode, Um, yeah. It unravels in one complete episode, whereas they could have extended it to make it feel more immersive. Well, there mm. are sirens going on in the background. That's all right. That's that's A. (laughs) (laughs) They're on to me. They're on to me. Yeah. Marlene King is about to come get me. Exactly. So shall we talk about A number two, who is CC Drake? Yes. Big A. Wait, sorry. Let me look at the script. So original A, big A, Mm -hmm. and Uber A. Incredible. Big A. (laughs) We'll talk about that last. Sorry. I'm getting getting ahead of myself. I'm just loving the captions you've had. Incredible. Okay. So CC, um, the reason I say her storyline has aged badly is that this isn't a spoiler because if if you haven't left, even though I told you there's spoilers, you <laughs> cannot complain. Um, CC is trans, mm-hmm. uh, which you know, great yeah. trans representation. Love representation. No, it's really badly done because it's put in last minute and the timeline is fucked up. Which is yes. funny. Um, do you watch Friendly Space Ninja? Yeah, I, I watched um, their Pretty Little Liars video, which I absolutely loved. I he loved breaks it. down how much they fucked that storyline, <laughs> that timeline. But anyway, yeah. sorry, you talk about what uh, your thoughts on CC as Big A. Well, now I have to talk about the the story. I don't know the um, the details of the storyline, so I would highly recommend go watch Friendly Space Ninja yeah. because that video it gave me so much life. Like, yeah, I, it just, it broke down everything so well, but the timeline was messed up. They got CC's age wrong. CC mm-hmm. was I think they meant to be police officer wrong, like in the timeline. <laughs> and it makes it feel very rushed. <laughs> it makes it feel like yeah. they didn't know CC was going to be big A. I have, you know, I'm getting there. I'm getting to that. Theory, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Of course. It makes it feel like they didn't really plan it. And, that is the mm. sort of 
worst part of being a writer. Um, Marlene King states that she knew CC was going to be big A from the beginning of uh, season three. I think she said she actually realized who big A was going to be in season two before Mona was even revealed, which is interesting. Um, I also just don't believe Marlene King. No, just, I don't know. Ever. I just it's or any showrunners like like it's like when the Gossip Girl showrunners were like, Dan was always Gossip Girl. Like, no, he wasn't. Yeah, exactly. no, he wasn't. Kind of like J.K. Rowling um, and her very adamant sense of, oh no, there are, there is representation in the books. It's just I didn't write it, but there is. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it is. Yeah, and speaking of poor representation. Um, I think a lot of Mm. people did have problems with Cece being the only trans character and also being the ultimate villain in a way. Mm. Um, it, it's very tricky to have this sort of representation. And I think Marlene King and the other um, producers were very excited to reveal Cece as being, um, a trans character and, the villain, it's, it, it does, I feel like, lead into very historic demonization of trans people. Even though this was only a few years ago, mm-hmm. and even today, um, trans representation on TV is so limited yeah. that when you do do it, you've just got to be careful, right? Yeah. Um, and to remind people of what that storyline is, um, please correct me if I'm wrong, it's very confusing. Basically... Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so CC is, um, what as a baby was called Charles, who mm-hmm. is, um, they gave away because the baby hurt Allison. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yes. Is that what happened? I believe they gave so. the baby away. Meant to be twin, either a twin of yes, Jason yes. It or, was the- or, Cece was the daughter, I believe, of the twin sister of Allison's mom, or is that incorrect? No, Cece is adopted, I think. I'm not sure. And was, oh my God, I I can't even remember. It's so confusing because the thing is, I get it mixed up with the third A who is, that is right. I also get um, it mixed up a lot with the books in general too, because there were twins in the books too. So it's like... Yeah, it's it's a roller coaster. <laughs> it really is. It really is. And they mess up Cece's age. Mm-hmm. Um, Cece is supposed to have gone to U uh, UPenn mm-hmm. and be maybe like four or five years older than Allison. Yeah. But then they show this flashback where uh, Cece is like a little kid mm-hmm. only a few years ago. Yeah. So who would end up being younger than Allison. They do have a very funny way of portraying flashbacks. Marlene King <clears throat> states that they're supposed to be subjective. You're not supposed to take everything you see as uh, scripture, I guess. But at the same time, they also have this flashback of Toby and Allison, and they're supposed to be portraying children. But, you know, the actors who played Toby and Allison are very clearly late teens, early twenties. They're mm-hmm. supposed to be playing like children though, like not even just preteens. They're supposed to be playing like eight years old or something like that. And really? I've forgotten that one. It's hilarious in a way. Yeah. It's supposed to be um, showing because Toby's mom was killed at um, Radley, the mental, yes. the mental institution. And she was supposedly killed while he was um a child apparently supposedly but yes. in the flashback you see um toby's mom coming into his bedroom and allison is there and toby is visibly a teenager or uh early 20s <laughs> i would say they meant for him to be a teenager i was gonna say i i think maybe they just forgot that he was meant to be a child yeah. and not that they were trying to insult our intelligence and say that that <laughs> no, they, year old they, actor they was... very much tried uh i think marlene king <laughs> even said something about that flashback no and yeah it it was it's a mess 
<laughs> it's it's messy. It's so messy. And yes, another problem people have with CC being um, big A is also her motivations, because in her first reveal as A or big A, that is in her first reveal, she says that she did it because the other girls didn't love Allison enough. That feels um, weird <laughs> mm. to psychologically torture. And I think Cece was very much more violent than Mona was mm. as mm. A. So it's very interesting that, that Cece decided that she wanted to kill people <laughs> because people didn't like Allison enough. And I mean, of course people didn't like Allison enough. Allison was a terrible Allison's person. Horrible. Yeah, she's horrible. She's awful, which... Yeah. Um, it's, oh, it's God. Funny. I hate her arc. I hate yeah. her arc so much. They try and make her nice, and it's just like... It just doesn't I, to be work. honest, I don't think they ever should have brought her back. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I guess they wouldn't have been able to carry on post-Mona. So. I think I think Friendly Space Ninja actually um, mentioned this in his video, that it would have been better for Allison to just remain this sort of ghost, you know? Like, is she here? I is agree. She isn't? Is she haunting them, you know, in a way? Yeah. And not, not confirmed. Yeah, exactly. not confirmed. No, I agree with that. Because yeah. I know in seasons one and two, they play around a lot with um, Allison showing up and they think that they're dreaming or hallucinating or drugged in some sort of way. And that yeah. was very fun. I thought... Um, not knowing what really was going on. Like, are they dreaming? Exactly. And yeah. when you do find out that she was there and it's like, okay, what the fuck was she doing the rest of the time? <laughs> Literally, like, why did she show up during... Did she have a job? Oh. Like, how was she living? <laughs> you know what drives me the most just <laughs> off the wall is after we find out Allison is actually alive, that makes everything else, when everyone, when the girls would be like, well, who is A? Can you help us? We are fighting for our lives out here. Like, can you help us? And Allison would be like, no, I, I can't. <laughs> Even though I know who A is, you know, I just can't help you. Yeah. What is that about? Yeah. It's, uh, I, yeah. oh God. Okay. Let's, Incredible. Let's move on to. Yes. <laughs> Uber A, the last the worst um a reveal oh everyone, hands down everyone hated this everyone and i mean yeah everyone. <laughs> i feel like that was a that was a strong consensus you know what i mean like there was very little disagreement on how much the fans hated that ending. yes and that is alex drake aka twincer aka <laughs> uber a she was the confirmed a for season seven and she is Spencer's twin sister, hence and Winsor. not to mention, I think um, Troy and Belisario is that her name? Mm -hmm. Who plays the who Spencer is like a really good actress. Like, I, I think yes. her acting is amazing, but her British accent, <laughs> Christ on a bike, it is offensively bad. <laughs> I could never have like a, an opinion on that for various obvious <laughs> reasons. Um, but yeah, people hated that. I still to this day, I see British Spencer um, slander on my timeline to this day. People yeah. hated that. Yeah. I think um, the actor who did play Spencer is just a phenomenal actress. Um, yeah. Anyways, like Spencer was my favorite character throughout the series. Mm. And in that way, it should have made this reveal so cool. But it didn't. <laughs> I think it, it made didn't. it worse. <laughs> no. It just didn't make sense. It was... And I think by that point, we all had... We were just fatigued by the just train wreck that the show had become since the beginning. You know, we were, hmm. like, very drained. We were like, okay, let's just get this over with. Let's just see. <laughs> let's just see. Put who... us out of our misery. <laughs> let's just see who it could possibly be. And then they say, yeah. oh, Spencer had a twin sister this whole time. We never met her, apparently, allegedly. But she's here. And the funniest thing is the way it happens is <laughs> her dad had an affair with Alison's mum, but this was not Alison's mum, oh, her mum. Her mum is Alison's mum's twin, evil twin. He bumped into her thinking it was Alison's mum, but it was her evil twin. So he banged her 
got her pregnant with twins and when they took spencer for some reason they only took spencer and not both twins even though they're both his children oh no it's because he claims they didn't know he yeah. claims that they only knew about spencer and it's like i'm sorry that's not how birth works yeah that's and also not... it's not like he's like the world's best dad he's not getting an award anytime soon yeah he had jason as well and oh my god, like, yeah, Jason. He was Jason's dad. That's yeah, it. and it's like, this. everything in this series could have been avoided if people just learned to, like, you know... Use protection. Yeah, use protection. Don't have affairs. Don't have affairs, exactly. That, that's a, that is the absolute... I'm sorry, Spencer's theme. mom deserved so much better. Yes, I, exactly. She was a MILF. She was a MILF. She was a lawyer. She was, was a good mum. Like, she, she wasn't was perfect. She made mistakes. But, like, out of all the parents, she was by far, like... She definitely did try to protect Spencer, like, tooth and yeah. nail. Um, who was the worst parent, would you say? I think it's Arya's parents, but that's just me. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting take. I was going to say Hannah's dad. Oh, obviously. He's He's upstairs. an idiot. He he, he 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 says to her, I can't afford to send you to college um because I'm paying for my stepdaughter's college. And here's the thing, I understand your stepchildren are your children, but like yeah. he just married her. Exactly. Like they've been dating for like two years. If you'd raised the child like child from a young age, then yeah, fair. But like mm -hmm. you've just married this lady. He How is the <laughs> literally epitome of deadbeat dads it's literally it's so in a way i loved that um there was that sort of representation even if it's like the worst True. representation ever True. <laughs> even though it's like a bad thing um i think it's in a way cool or um relatable i was realistic say. yeah realistic yeah. to see like a parent who just absolutely could not care less about his daughter yeah. And that really dominated, I think, uh, season one with him. So why do you think Arya's parents are the worst? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Well, um, for starters, <laughs> it has something to do with um, Ezra, maybe. I don't know. Oh, really? <laughs> See, the thing is, I don't know if it, it was just bad writing or um, just they were bad parents <laughs> uh but when ezra was first um when they first found out aria and ezra who by the way for those who don't know aria was like 15 or 16 when she met um ezra who is around 22 to 24 i'm not actually sure what his age was supposed to be but he was her english teacher mm -hmm. um he claims to have not known her age when they first oh yeah that. yeah <laughs> yeah he claims to have not known her age when they first started dating but even after finding out her age he is still very much uh adamant about dating her in his own mm -hmm. words he can't stay her. away from her spoiler he did know <laughs> yeah and he dated ali when she was even younger she could have only been like 14 yeah so what do you call that guys mm. that's a predator all right and... in the uk <laughs> <laughs> and when aria's parents found out they were rightfully uh, you know angry and distraught but then they're like oh all right i guess go ahead they don't go to the police yeah they don't and i understand i've never been in that situation mm -hmm. like uh, I don't have kids, but yeah. like the fact that they just let it slide and like <clears throat> they don't ever report it or anything. Like even Ella goes on to work with Ezra. Yeah. It, you and could... it's just like, you do realize he could do that to like other kids. I understand it's your choice what to do with your child as mm -hmm. the victim. In but, which like... he has done with other kids. Oh God. Yeah. Well, he yeah. has. Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> there you so, go uh, and it uh, really it really bothers me i and i can't even like completely blame just the parents in that situation because you know it is a show so there are writers who yeah. have <laughs> they have the choice to make ella and byron you know throw ezra in jail and i was watching um film fatale's video they recently did mm. a video great channel this is not mm. i'm not saying this because i am film fatale's friend i'm just saying <laughs> amazing channel anyways um 
It's they recently did a video where they say that the writers were doing this um, sort of technique in writing called lamp shading, where the writers Ooh. acknowledge that what they're doing or what they're portraying is wrong, but they do nothing about it. And I think they oh. did they did dance around the fact that Ezra was a predator in the in the show a lot. They would make reference to references to him going to jail um being fired and it's like well if you know it's illegal why do you still romanticize it you know it's even um my favorite bit is when aria has a boyfriend in season seven so like years down the line yeah. she's in her early 20s um and he says to ezra like you know you 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 were her teacher. That's really inappropriate stuff. And mm -hmm. Ezra, like the way Ezra responds is really like gross and just, he's Ugh. like, oh, you're just jealous. And it's like, Ugh. no, you're a nonce. Yeah, exactly. And the thing and she is, she still doesn't see it like that, but that's understandable why she wouldn't. Yeah. She, Stockholm she, syndrome. she was a victim, you know? Yeah. And we can't really expect, we should expect more from Ezra, who is the one doing the, you know, exactly, damage. exactly. But it's like, the writers are very adamant about portraying them as like this forbidden, sexy sort of relationship. And then when, you know, the whole book, as we're writing a book thing comes out and Arya finds out that he knew her already and that he was involved with Allison and then he's writing this book about the whole situation. She writes a police report um, to implicate Ezra for in her yeah. words, taking advantage of her as a sophomore or junior. I think she was a sophomore. Putting taking, it lightly. Taking advantage of her. And it's like, uh, how do we come back from that? <laughs> yeah. But, and she just doesn't turn it in because yeah. I think, is it Hannah who stops her? Hannah's yeah. like, oh, you might regret it. Mm -hmm. um, you're doing it because you're upset. But no... Um, I wish they didn't portray it like that. I wish they didn't. Yeah. I mean, it could be realistic. Um, I'm not, I don't know. I'm, I was never in that um, situation, but I feel like they could have very made it very much made it like a cautionary tale rather than something that's like something for us to consume and be happy with. Cause I, for one, could not watch any of their scenes like it just made something in me just like want to throw up <laughs> like because it did romanticize it like especially their sex scenes Ugh, um, obviously they weren't like really really sexual because it mm -hmm. was a teen show yeah but, like on tv they, they did them in the same way that they did like spencer and toby's mm -hmm. and hannah and caleb's like they were portrayed in the same way you know what i mean mm -hmm. Which you know, implies that those relationship relationship uh, yeah. or like level you know like equal yeah and the thing is, I wouldn't expect much from the writers to uh, implicate or sort of hold Ezra accountable because a lot of the other girls were seeing older people as well. Spencer was seeing Ren, and there's just yeah. this, there's just this scene burned into my mind about um, Spencer spending the night at Ren's house, and mm. he she falls asleep and she's late for school and he comes in he's like oh i was i was just at the hospital doing my rounds she's like oh i'm late for high school and it's like oh god <laughs> that's yeah that's... And bearing in mind if he's already like doing placement he's got to be like three or four years into his medical degree oof, oof. at least or he was just a doctor i don't think he even was like a student i think he was just a doctor doctor yeah i think so that takes doctor. seven years oh. <laughs> mm. Ooh, they really yeah. played around with that one. Oh, and wow. Allison and Ezra and Allison and Ian. I'm not sure how old Ian was, but Jenna and um the cop. Oh my gosh. Garrett. My. Is it Garrett? Yes. Is that his name? Yes. Who is? I don't know if you know this, but he is the pop star in the Lizzie McGuire movie. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. What Isn't a, that fun? What a role change. <laughs> I know, right? Incredible. Oh um, my god. But Alexandra Drake it's bad <laughs> it's so bad yeah. and I think that to steal another point from Friendly Space Ninja he talks about how the problem is that 
it just came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the great thing about mysteries is that when the answer is hiding in plain sight, whereas this, it was like, first of all, the twin evil twin thing is a cliche. Yeah. And secondly, it's like, you didn't, it wasn't earned. They didn't build yeah. up to it. They just, I think, couldn't think of anything else and just were like, yeah. I think they wanted to do a sort of fan service moment because not to say that everyone who watched the show read the books. I certainly, I think I got through like two books of that series. It's like 16 plus books in that series. Mm. Uh, but in the um, original book series, there was an evil twin, you know, um, I think mm. it was Allison's evil twin or something to that effect where the evil twin tries to take over the twin's life. And that's exactly what Alex was trying to do in a way, but it just doesn't make sense to me. Like that's a, that's a very big um, theme in Pretty Little Liars. The motives tend to not make sense. I think that, that's it, isn't it? And that very much makes the mystery, like the payoff is just, little to none mm. no? i think yeah. alex alex alex's motive was that she grew up uh poor she grew up in like seedy risky situations whereas spencer got to live a life of luxury and happiness and she had friends and a loving mom i would say loving parents but you know loving mom <laughs> and like <laughs> okay, that makes sense to an extent, but if you want to take over her life, why would you just go about it by torturing her and her friends, the friends that you want to have? Why the friends? Yeah, yeah. The friends, exactly. That's, that's another thing. I feel like the writers, they don't put motives in like a big enough picture where it would make sense for the A to torture the friends as well, because... I feel like Cece's motive also had to do with how she was raised and how she was accepted by her family. So what does that have to do with the others who yeah, are part of her family? It seems weird. A bunch of teenage girls just like... Yeah, they're just know. vibing. I mean... Yeah. <sighs> oh, it's... You know, do you remember the very, like, some of the very last moments of the show? Um, I think the la the very last moment is where they do this loop. It's like a repeat. It's a bunch of different teenage girls, and they do they recreate the opening scene. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And that's like, that makes no sense. Are you saying that this all happened? Like, no, shut up. <laughs> um, but before that, if I'm correct, like, Alexandra Drake and her mum, who is also Spencer's mum, so twin of Alison's mum. I always forget her name. Something. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. They are in, like, a glass box or something, and Mona's there. She's, like, got them trapped. Is that yeah, right? Did I yeah. make that up? No, no. You... <laughs> no, you did not <laughs> Am I having that. visions? <laughs> you did not dream that. Um, it feels like it. Yeah, because it makes no sense. But Mona kidnaps... Alex and I think the mom and keeps them in France forever but it's like how long that, is that gonna last yeah how does that work <laughs> how do they not escape how do they not like especially because she's in the um spin-off show the pre the imperfectionist Perfection uh, yeah well oh, wait maybe it's answered in that I haven't seen that oh my god yeah I I don't know if it's answered in that, but that would be so funny if she's just like living her life. <laughs> and, we have and they're no, just in a box. <laughs> yeah, we have no idea where Twinster or the mom is. It's just, exactly. mom is just living, you know? Good for her. Good for her. Yeah. <laughs> so are you going to tell us what who you think it should have been? Is yes. That... But first, Ooh, let me okay. say, they're, these Ooh. are... <laughs> Honorable mentions, and the A is in a capital red A. Yes. <gasps> the Incredible. two characters who I feel like could have been A, but uh, weren't allowed to be, I guess you could say, is Lucas and Jenna. If you guys mm. um, remember, Lucas was heavily bullied by Allison and Mona and everyone. She her. called him... Didn't she call him... A hermaphrodite. Yes, Hermie the hermaphrodite. It's that's lovely, isn't it? <gasps> yeah, Charming. Allison, Allison was just a sociopath. Yeah, <laughs> piece of shit. I hate Allison. 
she's such a sweet, loving girl. You know? <laughs> she, she really treated everyone with respect. And it's really amazing, you know, how anyone hated her. I, I don't understand it. But um, Jenna as well, I think she could have been a fantastic A. I feel like Jenna hmm. was treated as sort of a red herring in the way she that... She also had motive. Yeah, she had a gigantic... They made the bitch big, blind. explosive motive, it, I yeah. guess you could say. She was blinded by Allison, and uh, Allison's friends just sat back and watched. Let her. Yeah. By the way, the the way she was blinded, in case you forgot, uh, they set a fire mm -hmm. in jenna's house mm -hmm. so from that fire jenna went blind and they made toby take the fall yeah for it. they they made toby take the fall That's toby so was mean. also a victim as well because jenna was massive jenna was forcing herself upon him yes um, and their step siblings by the way yeah uh, that was a horrible horrible Christ. horrible yeah. thing um but i feel like these could have been very interesting a's i think they were both mm. on the a team or at least lucas at one point was on the a team he never got his full sort of <laughs> a moment but mm. let's get into who i think should have been a this Oof. is the theory that I attached to as like a, an adolescent, I really love this theory. I would the A is in red again. Just yes, so, in case you're listening, <laughs> I was very adamant about this theory. I would search on Tumblr all the time about this theory. It was very popular on that platform. Um, let's get into it. I think A should have been. Can I get a drum roll, please? First A. Hmm? First A. Which A? Or does it not really no, matter? I, it doesn't really matter, you know. I think. Okay. Well, let's say. No, I. I don't think it really matters. <laughs> okay. Cool. Sorry. Drum roll. There's <laughs> nothing I could really do about uh, yeah. writing. Yeah. Pretty little liars, but I will say, seasons one and two is when this theory was the most. Uh, it was the strongest in seasons one and two, so people probably okay. would have preferred her to be the first A. Okay. Ha. Huh. Okay. Mm, okay. okay. Don't um don't end the podcast after I show this. All right. <gasps> Aria yes. Montgomery. I've seen that said yes. a lot. And even Lucy Hale, the actress mm -hmm. who played her, thought she was. So tell us why. Go on. Everyone hated Aria is a theorist on Tumblr. It is it was a very popular theory, but at the same time, people felt it was very um it, they felt like people were grasping for straws with this theory. And in a way, I can totally see it. Um, I'll get into that. But I feel like there were, a, uh, there were a lot of coincidences and very strange connections that Arya had to A that could have been treated as sort of like a thing to confuse the audience, maybe, or even fan service. Because I, I do believe Marlene King, the writer of the show, did um, know that Arya was a big contender on, like, social media sites by the fans. So, let's get into the theories. Arya is a theories, starting with the name. So, you know, Shakespeare once said, what is in a name? <laughs> In Arya's name, that is hostility, that is bad vibes, that is just all around violence to me personally. So mm. in season two, there is a scene where Mona is like following after Arya in the hallways of school. She's like trying to catch up to her and she says, hey, big A, wait up. Now, this mm. is the first time we hear the phrase big A on the show. And it also happens in season two, the second episode of season two, no less. Interestingly enough, Marlene King, the writer of the show, states that season two is when she figures out who she wants to be big A. So it's interesting mm. that this is the first instance that we hear the phrase big A and it's spoken by Mona, no less. Um, I would say it could be just like a, a really funny little wave to the audience. But at this point, we don't know that there's a big A, you know, we don't know that there's going to be a different A other than Mona. So I Do feel you think like this was, oh, sorry. No, um, 
I was just going to ask, do you think this was like Gossip Girl where maybe at one point they thought Arya was A, but then because fans guessed it, they backed out? That's or... a very popular theory as well. Who did they want to be A? Who did they want to be um, Gossip Girl in? Eric, Serena's little brother. That actually... But then a New York Post article guessed it. <laughs> See, I hate the fact that I feel like mysteries are supposed to be guessable because if you're writing a very good mystery of course people are going to guess it it's because you're leaving the right clues and you're leaving a, a trail of breadcrumbs so to speak right and that just means you're really good at your job <laughs> and exactly just let it be yeah a lot of writers don't like that they don't like being good at their job and you know that's fine <laughs> <laughs> that's fine especially the writers of riverdale <laughs> <laughs> okay so there is another theory with the name okay. aria has a habit of drawing her a's the same way a would do she has Ooh. a very overextended uh middle line inside of the a sort of like the way mm -hmm. a draws theirs it's like an overextended middle line and we can see that in a name tag that she's wearing, as well as when she's on the Halloween train, she writes her name on the window. And the last A of her name is very similar to the sort of iconic imagery of A. And then... I am it, absolutely floored by this. I love this so much. <laughs> and then Incredible. there is a scene where... Arya even admits that she's A. I mean, okay, listen. <laughs> it's very <laughs> it's very uh sort of trickery going on. Arya is trying to throw Hannah's mom off of their trail. She's trying to get Hannah's mom off of their case so Hannah's mom doesn't go to the police about A because by this point Hannah's mom does know that A exists in a certain way. So, yes. Arya um, at the request of Mona, which is interesting, Arya at the request of Mona tells Hannah's mom she's A. She states, I'm A. A for anonymous, A for Arya. Very interesting. Ooh. And about the uh, big A thing uh, that I mentioned at the beginning, Marlene King does say that the real A is hashtag big A. So it is very interesting that Mona calls Arya Big A, and that is the first okay. time. That is the first time we even hear that phrase. So it's just really interesting. But okay. anyways, moving on, Ooh. outfits. Arya is very much known for her for her outfits. I feel like Arya's sense of style was very eclectic in a way. <laughs> but anyways, um, someone asks who is going to be dressed up as the black swan i believe it's also in the show where spencer sees that a is supposed to be wearing a black swan costume to this masquerade ball and this is also the episode that mona is revealed so mm, take that with a grain of salt um it is said that a is going to be wearing a black swan costume and Melissa, Spencer's um, biological sister, is indeed wearing a black swan costume, but it is later revealed that she was blackmailed into doing so by A. The only other person wearing a black swan outfit is Arya. And mm. interesting enough, she's also wearing black leather gloves, which is very synonymous with A. You know, yeah, you always see the shots of the gloves and yeah. Mm -hmm. Arya is wearing, um, is not the most well-known color scheme associated with Black Swan, but this is an, uh, a poster for the movie. And she's wearing red and black, like the mm. red and black uh, imagery inside of the Black Swan poster. There's Ooh. also a scene, I think it's an A scene, where we see A has this sort of dollhouse with these dolls in it. You know, mm. A loves dolls. So does Arya, but you know, whatever. Mm. <laughs> a loves dolls. And the Arya doll seems to be wearing a black hoodie. 
mm-hmm. on her doll, which is another thing that is very synonymous with A. Okay. The, <laughs> the last outfit theory. Someone asks for a clue on Twitter. Interestingly, interestingly enough, a lot of the clues come from Twitter. I think Marlene King was just just going at it on Twitter. She would just drop hint after hint after hint. I heard about this, yeah. It, it, she truly was J.K. Rowling <laughs> before J.K. <laughs> Rowling. <laughs> but someone <laughs> asks for a hint uh, of who A is. And Marlene King, interestingly enough tweets out three lightning bolts and three kissy face emojis. Aria has a habit of wearing lightning bolts and kissy faces on her outfits. She even has a folder with a kissy face as well. So take that as you will. Take that as you will. Mm. Is it a coincidence? Probably. Is it not? Probably. That's the <laughs> that's the best thing about Pretty Little Liars. Nothing makes sense, so anything goes. Exactly. Oh my god, okay. I love this. The last thing. Um, Arya Oof. has... Actually, this is not the last thing, but we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. I am unhinged, but I have been waiting for this moment my whole life. I just have to stress how amazing this presentation (laughs) is. So we've now our connections as this slide and you've gone all like that Charlie Day meme where he's got all the papers. (laughs) There's like pictures with red circles, you circling Mm -hmm. things. Amazing. Uh, IM messages are up there. Amazing. Incredible. Okay, so I I titled (laughs) this slide Connections because Arya has a very strange connection to things that A is doing. Now, in the first picture, I have a picture of Arya. She's wearing a black hoodie with white paint splatters across of it. Now, this isn't very typical of Arya to wear very quote-unquote lazy outfits, but this was after she had an argument with Ezra, so she thought that they mm. were breaking up, you know, as as she does throughout the entire series. It's about Ezra. Mm. Anyways. That's her whole character. Yeah, that's her whole entire character. So she's sulking, she's wearing a hoodie, it has white splatters, and in that same exact episode, the end screen, the infamous A end screen, is a um, a is spray painting over the population sign of Rosewood, and they are painting over the population number with white paint. So a black hoodie and white paint. Both oh, are my goodness. To Aria. That, that <laughs> just too many coincidences. Uh, too many, right? Okay, the second <laughs> the second picture <laughs> is. Um, oh, by the way, this is like all source from tumblr i got this mainly from aria is a on tumblr and killer aria is a on tumblr amazing and uh, they found that aria is holding up this magazine in season one she is showing it to Ibley, i believe i really don't remember the context of this um scene but she's holding up a magazine and in it you see she's showing like a pair of shoes there's a model it's like a mauve sort of dark red background and this is season one episode 19 in season two episode six there is a in screen with a and a has that exact same magazine page open on their desk and i think they're about to go buy the shoes as well which is interesting that they have the same exact magazine um it is a season apart, but also the showrunners have said that the A and screens are like out of order. They're not necessarily necessarily uh, side by side. I guess you could say. Oh, okay. Interesting. And mm. the last picture I have on this slide is a picture of Arya checking her email. She, I have no idea what she's doing on her email, but she's checking her email, and in the side of the screen. You can see she has an email from someone named Harvey D. The subject is fence install, and the first two lines say, I would like to go over the material options available for the fence project we have been discussing. That is season five, episode four. And if you guys remember, towards the end of season five, 
um, episode 25, there is a reveal that A has kidnapped the girls and placed them in this elaborate fence in the middle of nowhere. They can't escape. It's a very large, rectangular, tall fencing project. And this is interesting because Arya is like, what, 17, 18? What is she doing with a fence? What does she need to do a fencing project for? Hmm. Which is really interesting. Amazing. Coincidences. Uh, Coincidences. You're convincing me. I I feel like Arya should have been at A, right? Yeah. Yeah. You would think that. Okay, let's keep going. (laughs) Okay. Another theory I have is that this is is a subjective subjective theory. Um, I titled this slide, No Hard Feelings, because I truly feel that Arya is not um, targeted by A in the same way that the other girls are. Even she gets like, later on, she has a deal with A to get nice things happen and like for A to leave Mm -hmm. her alone and shit. Yeah. It's interesting. It's really interesting. So you could argue that, yes, A sent a a letter to Arya's mom about Arya's dad having an affair. But I would say that this, in a way, favors Arya because she no longer has to be the one to tell her mom that her dad is having an affair. And she also doesn't have to be the one to tell her. Therefore, her dad can't be mad at Arya. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, the easiest way out for her. Yeah, it's the easiest way out. You could also argue, well, A gives Hannah's, uh, A gives Hannah Arya's, no, A gives Hannah um, tickets to give to Arya's mom so that they can catch A or catch Arya with Ezra. That's interesting. I think that was more to fuck with Hannah, though. Yeah, right? that's exactly. Again, I think it's all the psychological stuff Hannah gets. Like, yeah, um, it, Hannah has to put her own family at odds with her friendship with Arya because I think A threatens to do something to Hannah's mom if she doesn't give Arya's mom the tickets. Is it or something stealing like that. the money? So she has is to it's... like choose friendship over family. Just, Am I right in thinking that her mum stole from the bank she worked at? Yeah, she did. Mm. She, she stole money from, like, this client. The client dies. It's this big, big, big thing. And that didn't work. Hannah just, she gives her mom the tickets, but Hannah also feels incredibly guilty about it. So she gets Caleb to, like, unhook Arya's mom's car, so Arya's mom doesn't even get to go. Interestingly, interestingly enough, um, Arya's mom and Arya's dad were in the midst of a separation at the time, and this causes Arya, Arya's parents to get back together as well, which I think is interesting because oh, Arya's yeah. mom doesn't go to the um, museum to catch Arya. She instead spends the night with her husband, so they get back together. Interesting, interesting. Um, you could also argue that A tries to get Ezra and Arya caught again using Arya's dad, because at this point, Ezra and Arya's relationship is known by the parents. Um, and A gives Arya's dad a letter saying, Hey, this is where your daughter is right now. She's at this restaurant. Like, Just go check it out, you know? Arya's dad shows up, but interestingly enough, Arya decides for once in her life to put her relationship on the back burner for someone else. She cancels the date with Ezra that day and goes to watch her friend, like, go kickbox or something like that. Yes, um, yes, yes, I know. Which has Ah, never happened. Arya, it is shown in the the show that Arya is very hell-bent on... Um, saving her relationship with Ezra to the point where she's even willing to tell the dean of her dad's school that her dad was having an an affair with a a grad student, which would Mm. effectively ruin his career. She's Mm. very, very, very hell-bent on making sure she stays with Ezra. So it's just weird to me that the one time she's like, oh, well, we can reschedule. It's fine her dad doesn't Mm. catch her and this makes 
Byron sort of realize, okay, maybe she is telling the truth. Maybe she isn't seeing Ezra anymore. And it kind mm-hmm. of makes it seem like he can back off a little bit, sort of ease up, you know, on her relationship. Mm-hmm. <sighs> okay. It all works out for Arya. It always works out. And I believe A even does things for Arya, not even against her. She, or A, saves the relationship between Ezra and Arya when Ezra was being blackmailed by Noel Kahn. I don't know if you remember that. It was like very early in the season, Mm. I think season one. Ezra was being blackmailed by Noel Kahn and Noel Kahn threatened to turn Ezra (laughs) into the police. But which I wish she did. I well, wish uh, I wish he got the chance. Personally, I love <laughs> Noel Khan's character. I know they make him into like this. Jerk. He ends up decapitated. <laughs> they <laughs> they make him into like this really terrible person. But it's like he started out so good. Yeah. Anyways, um, <laughs> A saves Arya's relationship. A tells Arya to get rid of Jackie, who is Ezra's ex, and that would also save. I remember the dolls. She yeah. pulls the doll, and the doll's like, make Jackie go away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the funniest scene ever, I, I talked to my fiance about this. Um, <laughs> there's this end scene with A. A is spinning a bottle to see who to target next. A has like this elaborate circle of bottles. And on each bottle, there's a face of one of the girls. And the bottle that A is spending, spinning lands on Arya. But a second A reaches over and changes it to Spencer, effectively saving Arya from being targeted, which I find interesting. Mm. And the, Very last, interesting. the last theory I have about that is um, A never tells or blackmails Arya when Arya cheats on her boyfriends, which she does a lot, by the way. Yes. Well, how, what has she done? She got with Ezra's brother, mm-hmm. um, who was much more age appropriate for yes. her. Yes. Mm-hmm. I believe they were the same age. <laughs> Imagine your brother, like, dating someone your age when you're a teenager. It's ugh, disgusting. Grim. Um, but who else? Does he cheat? She cheat on. She cheats on Ezra with um, his brother, and she. I wouldn't say she cheated on Ezra with Jason, but Jason did kiss Arya. And... Okay, so an, an emotional affair. Maybe. Mm-hmm. It wasn't as if um, A is above using that against people. Things that they yeah. didn't even really do. So it's just. And Jason was also too old for Arya. Yes, he was in college, indeed. In but indeed. bit bit less creepy than Ezra. Oh, so everything I think is less creepy than Ezra. True, yeah. <laughs> because there's just this big power dynamic with Ezra that oh, it, yeah. it, 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 of course, could be manifested in a relationship with Jason, but Ezra is her actual teacher. You know, there's like this power dynamic where he can like dictate how her future goes in a way. And it's just interesting that the writers don't really talk about that. No. Then there's the book theory. I know I'm just, I am so no, I love it. deep inside this theory. Attention but, to <laughs> detail is good. Um, the book theory is basically saying that Ezra was writing a book about A and Allison and the entire Rosewood mystery, as you guys know. Arya finds out that Ezra is writing this book and she rightfully feels used and betrayed because not only does Ezra know or not only did Ezra knew that she was a minor when he met her but he was also with Allison and that he's with Arya essentially to get this book out it feels very manipulative and gross to say the least um Arya reads the book and she proceeds to burn it. The thing that's interesting about Arya burning the book is that she is effectively burning evidence because Ezra was a lot closer to figuring out who A was than the girls were. And I don't know about you, but if I was being like psychologically tortured um, and threatened every day of my life, I would want to know. <laughs> I would want to know yeah. who it is. <laughs> yeah. 
she burns the book. And when she tells her friends, she says that Ezra thinks one of us did it. But she claims that she doesn't know who that is because she didn't read far enough to figure out who it is, which doesn't make any sense, like I said. As if you wouldn't want to read the whole thing. Yeah, it's it's quite Come literally on. about your life. It directly impacts you to read this book. I understand she was, like, heartbroken and just all around destroyed that someone she thought she could trust and someone who loved her um, love, in quotation marks, could do this to her but at the same time it's like come on aria you're ruining also, it also curiosity as well mm -hmm. i don't believe that a person wouldn't be curious enough to want to read every page exactly exactly and so and the thing that's more interesting to me is she knows that ezra thinks one of them did it that's that's going to get my curiosity going i'm going to be like oh yeah which know, one do you yeah, not want to know literally like and the thing is um, A is reading this, like, transcript of the book that um, Arya, like, threw it off of a ski lift or something, recovered it. Don't yeah. know how A got it. I'm actually not sure. But A is, <laughs> so like, funny. A is reading this transcript. And in the first paragraph, Ezra is just talking about how Allison is, like, lovable and... Adm admirable but at the same time she's like so cold and cruel and just devious she is cold and cruel and devious that she is and then the next paragraph it says perhaps aria knows this best and it makes you wonder what does aria know best that allison is cold and cruel but lovable or that aria is the same as allison and she knows how to be lovable and cruel. Because if he's saying that Arya knows that Allison is lovable and cruel the best, doesn't that sort of imply that Arya was most affected by Allison? And does that give Arya a motive? Perhaps. Perhaps. I mean, I think she, yeah, was love struck enough to. I don't know. Compared to the other motives, I think that is a more plausible motive, right? Yes. So, because some of the, as you say, like the some of the actual motives for the actual A's just didn't seem. Yeah, it it definitely wasn't um, fleshed out enough. No. I would say, but we'll get to the whole motive thing in What's a second. What's the mirror theory? The mirror theory was a very popular theory um, amongst Tumblr. Aria is a people. Um, <laughs> it was basically, I'm not going to spend too long on it because it, it gets a little convoluted, but it was basically um, the fact that Aria is shown to be in a lot of mirrors throughout the series, almost to the point where her character becomes, like, synonymous with mirrors. Um, in the first scene of the first episode, in fact, the, the series starts with Arya looking into a mirror. And it's... Sometimes the camera focuses on her mirrored persona before it even focuses on her actual physical form. So people thought that was really interesting, especially because one of the producers says that whenever he uses a mirror is for a very intentional reason. But um, Arya is a theorist, sort of theorized that Arya, the whole mirror theory is that Arya is someone with a split personality or um, multiple personalities. Now, I had to write down notes because I'm not <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very well versed on multiple personalities and um split mm. personality and I also do have a problem with only portraying mental illness when you're trying to sort of demonize someone. Yeah. Um yeah. But just so people can know, I got this, I got these notes from um, Smitha Bondari. She is a board certified psychiatrist. And she says that multiple personality is now known as disassociative identity disorder. And it is the presence of two or more distinct personality states that may stem from trauma. Some possible symptoms are depersonalization, meaning you are detached from your body. There is derealization, 
which means that the world is not real to you. It may appear foggy or just out of focus. Um, you have a failure to recall significant personal information or conversations, and there is identity confusion slash identity alteration, meaning you don't know who you are. There is a host personality, and the host may not be aware that they have other personalities. So the mirror theory is basically saying that Arya has two different personalities. She has Arya and she has the person who has taken over as A. And Arya has no idea that she is A. And that's a very popular theory among um, Tumblr. And you can even argue that some of the symptoms and some of the uh, catalyst for disassociative identity disorder kind of show up in Arya's character, there are moments where she is unable to recall conversations she has had with other people um, to the point where it feels weird that the writers are even focusing on that. Okay. Um, and I have a problem with that mainly because I feel like there is no real reason that Arya would be a other than a mental illness. Um, and that bothers me because you're basically saying that the mental illness is why she's this way. That's why she's violent. That's why she's stalking. That's why she is a, when I mm. feel like a better writing can be found in just giving people actual reasoning, you know, that's Motives. the one thing that I couldn't understand about Arya being A. What is her motive? What is her reason to torture her friends and herself, essentially? And yeah. there is no motive that the writers have given us that is. Yeah. I mean, if we're being very real, none of the A's, except for Mona, I believe, have very concrete motives. But, um, you know, it just, it doesn't make sense to me when it comes to the motive. And that's why I ultimately got rid of my theory that Arya is A. Even through all the coincidences and sort of connections she has with A, I really didn't feel comfortable boiling all that down to, oh, well, she's just mentally ill, you know? Yes. Because that tends to just, uh, it feeds into a long history of demonizing mental illnesses. So... Who is my version of the best A? You may be asking. I that am. That is Mona. She has, yeah. she has the motive. She has the motive. And I know in the series, they give her a mental illness. Uh, I think it's called adrenalized hyperreality disorder. But I think she has a clear motive outside of having a mental illness. They don't even have to yeah. like, add that in. She was bullied. She was basically left out of everything and the moment she feels included that's taken away from her mm. so she could be she could have been sending threatening messages to allison while allison was still um not disappeared i guess i can't say it when she was alive because she is alive but you know she could have been sending these threatening messages to allison because allison was bullying her she could have mm. left over resentment for the girls because the girls never helped her or stood up for her or yeah they just let yeah they just let I allison wreak havoc and there are um, some clues that i think were really interesting while i was rewatching that really sells Mona being a and the first one I thought was so funny was um when Caleb was having the birthday party at Spencer's grandma's lodge or something like that yes there's a scene where Lucas is taking Hannah out on a boat there's like this whole thing where Hannah thinks Lucas is a or whatever and yes there's like this scene where the camera is in the water sort of like beneath the boat and it's like watching Hannah and and Lucas in the boat and I just thought that was a very interesting um scene to show mm. but then when Hannah comes back ashore Mona and Noel come into the crowd and they're dripping wet they have towels over their bodies and they're like oh what did we miss and Hannah's like well I was just traumatized where were you <laughs> and Mona's like oh well I went skinny dipping with Noel 
in the same lake that Lucas was just in. And we saw this very interesting decision to have the camera almost at a swimmer's perspective, I thought was Ooh. very cool. Okay. I, I give Marlene King and everyone that, but you know, other than that. <laughs> <laughs> After all the fuck ups they did. <laughs> yeah. There's also this part where Mona is attacking the school sports records for Emily and then the school records somehow end up on Caleb's laptop as a way to frame him. A is trying to frame him and get him, you know, locked up. So I thought that was another interesting thing that I Mona's also smart enough to be A. Yeah, she's you know? she's very intelligent. She's very she has, I think, the funds to sort of keep the game going in a way because you Ooh. have to be you have to be paying people off. You have to be like everywhere at once. It it has to be very convoluted. But Mona, I think, is shown in the series to have uh, the equivalent or even higher of Spencer's IQ. So she could definitely pull it off. And the last thing I had about that was just um, there was a scene where Hannah is in the car. By that point, they had like blocked A's number. So A couldn't text them anymore. And A dedicates a song to Hannah over the radio. And the radio host says that um, Hannah's best friend is dedicating the song to her. And Mona and Hannah were considered best friends at the time. Mm. So... That is my theories. Amazing. Is that is that the PowerPoint? Is that yes, the... that is the... Okay, round of applause. I'm not going to clap properly because that will hurt people's ears. <laughs> Can we just appreciate the effort and the... I'm unhinged. <laughs> no, you are absolutely... Oh, my God, that was brilliant. Like, because honestly, I think when... I was one of those watchers of Pretty Little Lies where I'd watch it and I'd be like, that doesn't make sense. But I never really had like an alternative. And I think that's that's what makes it more fun to yeah. say, okay, it shouldn't have been this person, but you know who it could have been. Because mm -hmm. then that's, you could still like enjoy it and stuff. That's what know. makes like these murder mysteries so fun. And it sucks that it becomes like this big ball of disappointment in a way. Yes. <laughs> Because you you become invested and you you come up with all these theories and then it's like well oh the actual answer sucks so I have to live yeah. with that for the rest of my life that sucks <laughs> whatever can we also just go through what we think are some of the silliest moments on the show because you just reminded me of one can we talk about how dumb it was that Mona framed Ali for her murder. Oh, because Cece made her. Oh my god! And like her blood was all over the house. That it was her blood. That me a so much blood. I'm sorry. How would you get so much of your blood and not get ill? Yeah, not and, die. And they show that clip of her dead in the trunk with her eyes like ooh. And you know what? That annoyed me because it was just like either do it or don't do it. Yeah, don't chicken out. Exactly. And there's and this I other bit. Later on, where Hannah, they're dragging Hannah's body and her eyes are open and she's like, Ugh. and I'm like, I'm sorry, if you're being held hostage, <laughs> you wouldn't pretend to be dead. Exactly. I feel <sighs> like the silliest thing to me was sort of like the things that the writers did to seem very cool, I guess you could say, like with Maya's character. Maya, oh, you know, God, yeah. disappears. She is kidnapped. They did her so dirty. Yeah, they did Maya. I will never forgive them for that. I loved Maya's character. Didn't they kill all the black characters? They did all the black <laughs> characters. Toby had a lovely wife who, um, or fiance, sorry. Mm -hmm. And um, didn't she, uh, like her death, like they got in a car crash and then she died eventually. <laughs> did um. A didn't have anything to do with that. That was just a coincidence, the right? Writers are just just like, the writers are just like, no, we are not doing this. <laughs> yeah. Nothing he but... He has to end up with show. Spencer. Obviously, obviously. I just think... But yeah, that, sorry, you were saying... <laughs> oh, well, you see, Maya. Maya is kidnapped by her stalker, right? It has nothing to do with A, I don't think. No. Um, What was his name? Oh, I want to say... Landon? Yeah, I wanted to say Landon. Okay. no. That's someone in after, isn't it? Oh my god! <laughs> I'm 
pretty sure. I don't know that. I have no idea what after is. I've never seen it in my life. Yeah, I've never seen that in my life. I've never read it. I don't. I don't no. know who Landon is. Yeah, sorry. Um, the guy, the guy, the guy, the guy who kidnaps her, right? So there was this whole storyline where Mona is in Radley and she tells Arya, Arya, you're a killer, not Ezra's wife. Or Miss Arya, you're a killer, not Ezra's wife. And this oh, yeah. becomes like an acronym to say that Maya knew. But we were like, okay, so what did Maya know? Like, does it have anything to do with A? Why is Mona saying it? And it's just Marlene King was like, no, Maya knew her stalker was in town. And it's like. Why would Mo Mona know that? Why would Mona know it? Why would she tell Arya? Why would they make it into this like acronym for Arya being a killer? <sighs> also, it's like that that storyline with Maya was probably like the most realistic storyline in the show. Like women are. Mm -hmm. killed every day by men that they reject right? yeah exactly and the way they just didn't treat they, it was just a throwaway thing it was like oh let's just kill her off yeah they had and to they had to show in some way what happened to maya because she can't just like disappear and never be seen again i guess yeah it's like they had a really big grudge against every black character on that show. they really did <laughs> yeah and then emily shoots the guy which i mean understandable because mm -hmm. he's attacking her mm -hmm. but then they kill off toby's fiance who's perfectly nice and they also that, again nothing to do with a they just wanted to get yeah rid of they her. also kill shauna who is another black oh, character God. and it's like yes i forgot about her um and that was jenna's girlfriend mm -hmm. or like she was in love with jenna i yeah. don't know if they were ever yeah exactly they, Doesn't Arya kill her? Yeah. Technically. Oh, Arya kills and then her. Arya's like, I feel bad for a while. It's like, oh, episode's over. I'm done. Thanks for having me, guy. <laughs> it's like, my grief is over now. Yeah. It's and like, also, Shauna wasn't even evil in the end. She was just she love stricken was, and doing what Jenna told her. Yeah. Right? This show is quite literally the bane of my existence but it's just so good i have to keep <laughs> watching even though i already know the outcome it's like i can't stop watching it hurts a little bit oh god you know another moment which annoyed me is when toby is temporarily a i okay keep in mind i was young <laughs> at the time <laughs> i was young at the time that pretty little liars was airing i wasn't even like out of high school yet um i was torn up by that <laughs> i was so sad i treated it like it was happening to me when he was revealed i was like this is the end of me like it's over yeah for me. no i mean i love toby we all love toby i love so... toby so much i mean yeah isn't he also older or am i reading into that too he is he is a couple years older uh... That's and he turn and he becomes a cop like in the space of a week and I don't like cops. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's so funny. It's so funny. It's so funny. I can't. It's just funny. <laughs> he becomes a cop. That's the end of Toby. Toby's Can we done. talk about that cursed moment in that Christmas episode where Paige? Toby, Caleb, and Ezra are sat on the stair, stood on the staircase, all in like christmas underwear like santa boxes and imagine page, like, the a horror one. that standing next to ezra <laughs> imagine the horror that those poor girls had to feel it's like oh that's my old english professor huh he's the oldest one in the room right now huh <laughs> i'm sorry that's your friend like imagine your friend being like ezra uh, i'd be like Ugh. he's not coming over my house if i was spencer no. i would have I barred him like also what? like at parties like social gatherings and stuff they're like who is this older guy why Ugh. is he here like don't you have a mortgage to go pay off like yeah come on. Oh, i know i know he was like 22 i'm 22 right now people tend to think that i'm like old i think someone did... right what because you're wise i don't know i'm 22 <laughs> and i got a message the other day it was like oh you're so much like older than i thought you were but the thing is they thought i was 25 so they think i'm older than 25 <laughs> where did they get this information i from? don't know <laughs> i don't know if it's if it's probably because i probably have a, a younger audience but and also you're engaged maybe that's part of it yeah like, that's probably why people think that also i have they're not gonna think you're 17 like yeah yeah people used to but now i'm <laughs> you know geriatric 
but <laughs> I do think it has to do with me being engaged as well. Cause I think I mentioned that I I've known my fiance or I've dated my fiance for like six years. And so people are like, yeah, yeah. Like why, how do you, how do you know him that long? Aren't you like supposed to be young? <laughs> <laughs> exactly yes. yeah what's another ridiculous moment on the show i feel like there's so many but what other ones curse you what other ones are sort of haunting your dreams there are truly so much oh i know i guess you could say the most ridiculous part was allison coming back and oh. suddenly being like mother Teresa. <gasps> oh my god <laughs> Shania, Shania, when A implants Emily's eggs, oh fertilize by fucking, um, um, who's the dad? Who's the dad again? It, it was Allison's like a uh, fiance or something like that, I think. Hello, this is editing Tara with a correction. Not that it matters because Pretty Little Liars just doesn't make sense. The baby that Allison gets pregnant with, so Emily's eggs. Alison's belly. Wren is the father, British Wren, because he dates Alexandra Drake and she kills him and then turns his ashes into diamonds. Yep, I'm not making that up. That happened. You can rewatch it to check. <laughs> well, okay, implanting Emily's eggs into Alison so she ends up pregnant and then Emily and Alison like get together and Emily's annoying but like she does not deserve Alison like she's nicer than that like yes, Alison is exactly. a piece of shit Al like uh, Emily deserved better Alison treated her like absolute garbage when and okay I guess you could say in a way it's like well maybe Alison wasn't comfortable with her own sexuality at the same time when she was younger so whenever Emily would come on to her and Allison would lead her on in a way you could argue that. Yeah, but not all the other terrible stuff she did. Wait, Allison was just really but a bad person. She was just bad. She, she was, was just a terrible, terrible person. And they should have. She was just awful. They should have kept her a terrible person. I think that would have been. I agree. So good, honestly. I if Allison was a, maybe. Mm -hmm. No, maybe not actually. But, but if she it... was like something evil, mm -hmm. I think it's yeah. fine to have like very questionably terrible morally horrible <laughs> characters there's nothing wrong with having these terrible people because they do I love villains yeah they exist in real life and it's it's fine you don't have to like redeem every single person ever like, oh my god let them be bad Re yeah remember when ezra's ex-girlfriend from high school maggie has a son and he thinks it's his and then it just turns out not to be his and it's like well that was a pointless storyline they just it? wanted that to give complete. they just wanted to give Arya something new to do because by that point they were on and off again for the 18th yeah. time they were like god yeah. we gotta we gotta throw some spice in here we gotta i know it was so pointless though it was just like what this added nothing and it completely undid itself and i think that was the issue with a lot of the pacing of the show is that there would be a few banging episodes like the la the first two and like the last two would be really good and they'd get all the plot in mm -hmm. but then in between it was all this filler and it was because i guess that's the contract they have i suppose they have a number of episodes they need to make but it's like why not just like spread out the plot more yeah. why not just like make it that's, I don't know, it just seems weird. That's a good point because I feel like they could have spread it out. They could have spread out the first two seasons a little bit more and just have Mona be yeah. A. Like, no other A after that. Just Mona. That's it. Like, yeah. We wouldn't have to deal with the whole CC and Alex Drake horribleness. We could have just had Mona and it would have been great. And I feel like it's like writers just don't want their shows to be great. They would rather be like payoff of having all these episodes and then the audience is like, oh my God, when is it over? Like, yeah, because that, the way that Pretty Little Liars just went on for so long, it seven does. years is a long- Same with Gossip Girl as well. Like mm -hmm. lots of good shows just drag on and on and on. They don't and know when to- It's end. about money. It's about, yeah, like- yeah it's a bummer it's a bummer and i mean i understand <sighs> i know my videos like on on youtube are super long and it's like sometimes i get comments that are like you could have ended this so much sooner <laughs> and i'm like 
well yeah but i like to talk so <laughs> yeah We're- but also that's uh, yeah i don't know i just feel like they can they can duck out you know what i mean with pretty little lies it's like you're making me wait to find out who the murderer is mm-hmm. come on literally they could have ended it season two could have been the absolute end but i think yeah. we should have saw it coming because mona somehow survived that fall off the cliff and we should have saw it coming and it's like it's like oh we're gonna be i'm being for- murdered by cc and her blood is all over the house and her poor mom has to go through all that grief. <laughs> and it turns out she's not even dead no one dies poor mom. no one dies in rosewood except for the black characters you yes. don't you don't see them like no <laughs> They've got to go. <laughs> everyone dies but them. Or everyone uh, doesn't die but them. It's it's insane. It, at the same time, I do feel like Pretty Little Liars was just a cultural touchstone. It's just something that... Oh, gosh, yeah. It's something that can never be done again, no matter how hard HBO tries. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I mean, it, it it's still iconic, even if the last few series aren't good. It. Mm-hmm. It's it's worth watching just for those first two or three seasons. Yes, like, it really is. Because they're so good. And like, you could see they were trying. Yeah. It's like they, exactly. they gave up after, I would say season four, it's like they really gave up. They were like, yeah. I feel like Marlene King was trying to get the show off the air. <laughs> no really? Matter, no, matter, <laughs> no matter what she tried, they would not yeah. take that show off no exactly I think- and you know funnily enough they didn't keep her on for the perfectionists because like the ending because her ending was so controversial and so disliked i don't want to laugh at that that's sad. hilarious <laughs> it is kind of funny it's kind of sad as well i feel bad for her but then it's also like i kind of understand because it's like if she came up with an ending that made everyone hate the show and its legacy mm-hmm you probably don't want to keep her on for the spinoff. <laughs> Just don't make the spinoff if you're asking me. But well, yeah. they're making a reboot already, which I'm just, <sighs> it, it pisses me off. It's just like, why? We're never going to get rid of it. <laughs> no, and just let it be. I, for one, I feel like reboots are like a tricky sort of subject because it's like, would I watch a Twilight reboot? Yeah, I would. <laughs> <laughs> I would. But it's like, should there be a Twilight reboot? Just because, That's the problem, right? Just like, yes, a, of course we'd watch yeah, it. Just but... because there's an audience doesn't mean you have to make it, you know? No. There's, just, exactly. There's times where you could end things. It's fine. It's, all good things come to an end unless you drag them out and then they stop being a good thing. <laughs> and there you have it. There. Those are my final words. There you what are your it. last words on Pretty Little Lies? What would you want the takeaway of this whole uh, thesis you offered us today? Um, Ezra should go to prison. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I love that. Ezra what a statue be... of limitations in Pennsylvania? No, there really is isn't. too late? Even if the show okay, is great. over, just make one more episode and the whole episode is Ezra just getting locked up. <laughs> He's just getting locked up. That's I feel it. like the internet would be so happy. They should be. I would be so happy. That would that actually would make my year. Literally. Like, hello, Pretty Little Liars writers, if you're watching this, if you're if you are on the reboot, send Ezra to jail. I mean, if it's in the teacher. same universe and they just mention like, oh, there was a teacher here called Mr. Fitz. Yeah, he's in prison now. He, yeah, he's in prison for life. I would applaud. Yes. I would be thrilled. I would be grateful, actually. That's the only reason I would watch. So if you want money, writers, send as Just make that. <laughs> yeah. I want to see him in that orange jumpsuit. Yes. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> exactly oh well thank you so much for coming it's been an absolute dream and for the preparation and just everything you absolutely knocked it out of the park i'm a try never had yeah. a guess <laughs> you, no you're, you deserve a plus plus triple plus star yes. amazing thank you um, do you want to tell the people where they can find you uh just yeah. yes my youtube name is shan spear um, you can find me on Instagram at shania.jpg. That's S-H-A-N-I-Y-A dot J-P-G. I also have a Twitter. I don't use it. No, no point. <laughs> no point in following yeah. me there. <laughs> Same. Yeah. 
Oh, great. Well, thank you so much. Shall we do the bye-bye? Bye-bye now. Yes, I've been waiting for this. Yes. Okay. So if you just do it to your camera and I'll count us down. Okay. In three, uh, two, uh, one. (gasps) Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye now. (laughs) Bye-bye.